How do you handle and deal with liars in business? People that don't keep their word. Well, that's actually that's breach contracts. Other than the street, where the, where the where the consequence of lying is usually like death, you know, and that's just the rules of the street. You know what I mean? It's, if you sign on to that, that's what comes with it. Right. You know, if you if you go against what you sign on to, the punishment is death. But in the corporate business, it's really legal action. You yeah. know, and and period. So people lie all the time, and right. and when you catch them lying. The way for them to get off them lying is to accuse you of lying, even if you're honest. You know, and that usually brings emotion into it, and that takes all the attention off of the actual lie. It's the reaction to the lie. The crazy thing about liars is they get offended on how you act or react to their lie. To their lie. So they'll lie, and because you feel as an honorable person disrespected, you might react. You know, it's a natural, instinctual, human, innate thing. You go and react. And because of that reaction, now that's the problem. And that was actually my whole career in Rockefeller. It was reacting to people being dishonorable. You know, and in the street again, there's violence, there's knuckle play, you know, you smack niggas, you you, you know, you shoot these kind of things. That's the consequence of that game you sign on to. But the people in the in, in industry you know, they're not cut from that cloth. They never signed on to that. There really is. Sorry, some sneaky shit. And, and no one really believes that anyone will go to court. You know, because court costs money. It, it takes, it's a process. And if you don't know how to finagle it right, you know, a lot of people don't want to deal with it. But see me, I'm very litigious because I have no choice. Like, Did every you feel funny with court at first though? Like, no. It's almost like, no. no I felt don't. funny with not smacking certain people. Okay. Yeah. I, felt, I felt funny with people disrespecting me, lying to me, robbing me. And in the street, you have no choice but because I'm thinking like you from like being from the streets. Nah, because I'm. It's the, like it's almost like is it like, like snitching? snitching. And no, like, because like, what is it? snitching is when someone commits a crime with someone and right. tells on that person to person. not go to jail. Right. That's snitching. Exactly. You know, going to court in corporate business is a game that you signed on to. Right. There's nothing that's uh, uh, dishonorable about going to court to get justice. The court mediates. And, and think the about it. Now, let's say I'm supposed to be corporate, but I'm gonna deal with in a street way. Who looks stupid? So if you somebody robs me and I right. put my hands on somebody or I shoot somebody and I'm like, yo, these are the rules in the street. Now I look dumb. And also when you know people are watching, it's your responsibility, especially to represent your culture right, but also to teach them right. So you don't want to look stupid to people that are looking up to you. Right. So you can't deal with things in the street if you're not in the street. If I'm in the street, which I shouldn't be, then yeah, I'm gonna deal with it street wise. That's why I stay out of it because right. I'm gonna go right back to that mentality of you disrespect me, I got to disrespect you or right. I can't come out. But in corporate, you just got to go to court, and, and they, they, don't, they don't feel a way about it. There's no like, there's no feeling bad about comp going against what you signed on to, on, so signed on to as it relates to honor in this business, because right. people don't have any. Just the you rules can't of the expect game. you can't expect people to feel bad about being dishonorable if they're dishonorable. You understand what I'm saying? They yeah. don't care. You, you, shouldn't, you can't even get offended. You just have to deal with it. Like, bro, you don't even know what this is. So let me just. That's Cause why. Because in, that's that's, in the streets, that could turn into a different thing. Not because like, it, it does. It does. You can't automatically. Not, if you don't deal with right. certain things a certain way, then you can sit it soft. Right. Then right. you can't hustle no more. Right. Then you can't work no more. In the, in this business corporate, you got to get smacked up and violated every kind of way, which is why I left it. The reason why I stopped being in the music business is because I couldn't sustain the disrespect. You know, I just couldn't From do nerves, it. nerves, just nerves, just coming up disrespecting Y'all saw how I was. I'd be like, flip, and I nerves. couldn't be, and it would be so, if I swung yeah. on everybody I wanted to swing on, I'd look stupid, and I'd be in jail, yep. and I'd be paying a lot of money out. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, and everybody knows Cause that. Because it's almost as if they was, they was trying to provoke you to oh, do definitely. something like that, definitely. so they could sue you. Well, that's the thing. That's the reason why when people do something that's not honorable, the first thing everybody says, you know Dane, you know he gonna disrespect. I'm not disrespecting, that's my reaction to disrespect. You know, it's crazy how people position things, but I've never just disrespected someone out of left for no reason. I've just, if you disrespect me, I'm taught to disrespect you much worse right. so that no one else will disrespect me. And that's you. where the yelling comes in. The yelling, and because that's, a, that's, that's, that's the tip of the iceberg before it goes violent. It would, be, like, it would be the only thing that I can do to express myself. The only thing I could do to make people not disrespect me is the fear of me embarrassing them. So usually what I'll do is I would try to get to somebody, girl, or I would yell at them mm. in front of some people, the or strategy. I would laugh at them in front of some people. Max but that, I would, if, if, if like, if it justified, you disrespected me so much that I feel like I touch your girl, then you really disrespected me. 
You understand what I'm saying? But that was usually my ultimate get back. You actually actually did that? That was like a game? Yikes. In the game. To the executives. <laughs> Executives to, to your so-called CEOs. That's the that's the reason that why they would treat you like that because they know that you know a, a woman is always Damn going to, to 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 respect a real man, an honorable man, someone that fights for what he believes in. Anybody yeah. will. Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? So it'd be like these guys are lames anyway. Most of these guys only got girls because of because the fact they that they're have successful. money because of success. Right. So they, they don't even know how to carry the success because they never were. They don't know how to get the girls. They're bottle service. Only nice. way you get in the club is if you show your money. You know what I mean? You ain't getting in the VIP without buying a table. I'm going to get in there without it. I'm going to just walk in because I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? So I've never had to have money to get girls. A lot of guys, the reason why they play so dirty is because if they don't have this in this position of power, they're done. No clubs, no friends, no girls. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Like You got to think about a lot of the people that have people around them. Would they be around them if they weren't getting paid? You know, how many people are around people, be taking pictures of that person's success and that person's money and be like as proud as if it's theirs. Right. That's just not a person I've ever wanted to be. As you say, posing with the money. But I'm not going to pose. Somebody else posing with someone else's car. Some people, no, some some, no not even that. Some people actually be like, yo, this such and such stuff, this such and such money, and just be proud to be in that presence of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would never tape another man walking out with some bread. I'm never taping another man's car collection unless they're my real friend and I'm just be trying to make them look yeah. as good as I look right. so that people, you know, might have a misperception of a person. But I'm never going to be like, feel my social status is better because somebody else is successful. You know what I mean? Right. But that's but that's that's a part of the cloth, the cloth you're cut from. You don't look at it. You look at it totally different than the average nerd in the square. That's Listen, a business. You know, it's crazy because... I can honestly say that I left the game completely for the last 25 years. And, and you're happy about it? Not only that, but what I've observed from the outside looking in is things have really changed. People's morals and principles are different. You know, the people accept things that weren't accepted before. Now, you know, that could be me being old, and it is me being old, but it's hard to kick things that have been indoctrinated, indoct what do you say, indoctrinated? Indoct indoct yeah. indoct whatever it is that have been just drilled into my brain. I'll never think it's all right to be dishonorable. You know what I'm saying? And again, every time someone else is dishonorable, they always try to make an honorable man look dishonorable to cover up for what they did. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, right. So it's annoying, and that's why I had to do everything on my own. Because when you catch a liar, when you catch them in their little shit, they, it's just, they don't know what to do. It's a panic mode. They just feel it's like, It's a whatever oh, mode. To. But you know what? If somebody lies to you once, and you let them lie to you again, that's your fault. It's your fault. So like, once I catch somebody lying to me about the littlest, minusculest thing, I don't trust them no more. Because if you lie to me about something little, you'll definitely lie to me about something big. Pause. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's just, to me, logic. You know? It's just logic. Period. What's happening? This is the big homie Kenyatta. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube page. And if you haven't already, hit the notification so you can get an alert each and every time our hip-hop motivation videos come up. And also, thank you for your support. Peace and blessings. This week on DDN. So while you work out, you're not diabetic? Continuing the debate between David Kane and Layla Africa. Traditional versus non-traditional doctors. You're stored in the I muscles. Can I ask a question? Yeah. This is your show, bro. But I'm just saying. And <laughs> ask me to leave. We believe that connected devices like CEO these CEO of... Jeff Dachis teaches us how to track your diabetes using OneDrop. Can transform healthcare today. So you're about to make a quiche without crust? Raquel makes a delicious breakfast frittata. Mm. Yep. All right. Oh my God. Thank you. So good. Being in love with someone that loves the same thing you love. And entrepreneurial life with special guest Linnell Jackson. And we get to create the things that we love. And that's what we monetize. For the full episode, check out our YouTube channel and dame-studios.com. Listen, for mad years, I walked around with my neck looking like a Nestle Crunch Bar. I had to do something about it. What I found is that a razor bump is nothing but an ingrown hair that curls into the skin and causes the skin to become enlarged or inflamed, making it look like a bump. But it's not a pimple. It's a hair that grows into the skin causing inflammation. You have to remove that hair and then you have to use yourself a nice skin astringent, something that can do the trick, something that can get rid of those razor bumps. So what did I create? Bump Assassin, 
organic skin astringent. To order your own bottle of Bump Assassin, go to hiphopmotivation.bigcartel.com. When you writing a book, day? I'm writing. I also have a book. You know, I have a um, <laughs> book called Culture Vultures. Yeah, what's it called? It's mm-hmm. called Culture Vultures. I did. If you, have you ever looked at the hip hop motivations that I do? Yeah, absolutely. Like, so, yeah. me and um, Kenyana did a book, and I've already, it's already written. He wrote it. We we done with it, and I'm also giving it out in different ways. So it's gonna be an auditory experience as well. It's a series. The fashion game. Culture Vultures, the book. Okay. In business, Dame is a guy that's worn many hats. Yo, you can either think of a master plan or get mastered by somebody else's plan. Check it. As a barber, one of the most important life lessons I learned is to never do anything without seeing the ending result first. Before I understood the value of seeing results, I used to waste a lot of time sometimes doing double work because I didn't have a vision of where I was going. Then I started taking consultations more serious by not even turning on my clippers until I had a clear understanding of the result my client was planning to see. And in turn, it became easier to achieve the style they wanted to see in half the time. Real talk, the most successful barbers and beauticians are the ones that see the ending results before they start any service. Write this down. Before making any moves, know where you're going. Deciding from thoughts of being sick and tired of something, starting something, or admiring something can be the emotions that fuel change. Because write this down. Emotion leads to passion, passion leads to action, and action leads to results. Word up. Question, what's the number one killer of dreams? If you said fear, you're wrong. Fear is on the list, but it's not the number one killer. The number one killer of dreams is comfort. The comfort of a good paying job or in an active relationship can seduce us for many years into the rhythm of accepting things without making any moves to change. Further numbing us into a state of zombie-like passiveness. Write this down. Passiveness will cause your dreams to pass you by. Thinking about something. Like <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm a musician. Yeah, exactly. I like to spend all kinds of money. Like the dollar, the euro, like the pound, like the franc pause, like the yen. 